The Madhouse did not disappoint again tonight. Hi, I'm Bob, and this is Justin. He is the king of stats for Southern Modifieds. You want a stat? Ask him. He will actually give you the answer. But another night here at Bowman Gray Stadium, week number two, and the old guys were out in force. Uh, my apologies. The veterans, if you will. And, yes. and they showed a lot of the younger people that they can still get to their winning ways. Yes, they realized that these wily veterans, they're like, not so fast, young bucks. Not so fast. We're still here. The changing of the guard has not changed yet. We're still here. And knock, knock. Father Tom's not catching up with us yet. <laughs> Chris Fleming, 60 years old. Lee Jeffries, 57 years old. Yep. And they just keep on going up the wind columns here yes, at the do. Bowman Gray Stadium. Yep, they keep on, keep on climbing. And that's the thing. We always talk about the big three. We always talk about Myers, Myers, and Brown. We always talk about them. But the unsung heroes, the ones that always sneak in and get some wins, get some poles, is like Fleming and Lee Jeffries. Lee Jeffries got four poles last year. Everybody was like, where did he come from? And Lee got it done tonight, and I was so proud. It was it win 24 for yes. Jeffries? 24, and he's now nine away from tying his dad with 33, Robert. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And 15 wins for the showstopper, Chris Fleming. And I thought what was really interesting about Fleming is that his son, Jordan, got oh, to take yes. the victory lap with him. Uh, yes. From you as a guy that's been around Bowman Gray Stadium for such a long time, what did you think about that? Was that warm and fuzzy for you too? Well, I've been coming here for 30 years. and <laughs> getting old. Yeah, yes, I'm getting old. Um, <laughs> and it was just, it, it humbles me every time that – a family wins like the next generation of family wins it's so humbling and it warms my heart so much because you don't know when the next generation is coming and we saw it tonight with uh jordan fleming pulling up beside his dad and luke luke and jordan built that car it was so cool to see it and see brian sykes jr get his first career win in the street stocks him and his father brian senior became the 43rd father-son duo wow. to win a feature main event at this racetrack and it's just so humbling to see all these families coming together and that was um the theme of the night on the flow racing broadcast is family like almost every single winner has family ties to way back in the day it's just so cool to see the families continue the winning traditions like 30 40 50 years apart and get this michael adams Michael Adams won the second race. His father won a street stock race 40 years ago in 1983. He only won one that year, but it was 40 years ago. That's just so amazing to, to even recognize and even see. That's so cool. I told you this guy's got stats, okay, <laughs> bottom line. But this, this place is generational, and I, I love what I saw out of Jordan. And Chris, when I talked to him after the race, he's like, listen, he finished right behind me. Uh, he in, did. The, in the second modified twin 25 and, and i spoke to luke earlier in the day and i mm -hmm. said when are you going to get in the car and, and he goes <laughs> oh, i might run a race or two he says but honestly jordan was there for me yep. for so long and, and it's time for me to give back to him because he stood by me for so long and yep. I, I love just that heartwarming story that uh, luke gave me that's that's amazing to hear the first time i heard that and that's just the Fleming family racing motto is they love to give back. Chris gives back with his 855 in the morning um, sermons. So it's just so awesome that uh, the Fleming family tradition keeps growing. And he is right. Jordan always stood by Luke. It was them versus the world. And it was Frank and Chris back in the day. And now to see the brothers come together and Luke giving back to his brother is so cool. and. I, I love it. I gotta give a shout out to Miss Lynn Miller. She's she's one of the one of the, the perfect women of the Fleming family. She showed me pictures of, of Frank way back in the day, um, racing at Wilkesboro. Um, Miss Lynn, um, we miss you. We we hope you have a speedy recovery, and we can't wait to see you back at the racetrack. Absolutely. I want to talk about one other thing before yep. I let you go here. Yep. You know, we could talk about Burt Myers being very consistent and uh, has yep. that point lead that win last week in the Hayes Jewelers 200. Mm -hmm. He finishes in the top five, maybe the top three, actually. Yep. You can correct me if I'm wrong. The top three in both races tonight. 
But I think a lot of the story of that second race was about the teammates and what <laughs> happened over there in turn number three. What's your perspective? Oof. <laughs> I put you on that, the spot. That's it, like oof. Um, I'm sure that's way, that's what Jeff Day is thinking, like oof. But um, it, it was interesting to see, like, Brandon was giving Daniel all the room, all the space. He's like, okay. He gave him the old Teddy Christopher three taps. Like, okay, I'm here, I'm here. And Brandon's car was much faster through the center of the corner. And Daniel's car, it just was not turning off the center. You can see it just getting loose. And coming down turn three, you, coming down turn three, you can see going into turn three, uh, I hate to say it, I really hate to say it, but Daniel come down a little bit, oh. and you could see Brandon's left front was in the grass, clearly in the grass, so it's like, uh, nah, I don't want to cast no stones, but because they're teammates, but I mean, it's kind of like door bumper clear. Well, Brandon was there on the inside, and he had the preferred line, and by rule, the racing rule, that's his spot, especially in the 600 horsepower modifieds, mighty modifieds. That's it. Like if you're right there, you got the spot. It is your spot now. So, I love the perspective that you gave because it was hard for me. I was standing over in turn number four, and kind yes. of those cement things in the center of three and four kind of took my perspective away. Right. So that's really right. interesting to hear. Now I did speak to Brandon Ward, and yes. listen, he he's like you could tell his heart is yep. is hurting tonight because. <laughs> Basically, no matter whose fault it was, yep. two teammates got taken out of contention. He said, we yep. should have finished. No matter who won, we should have yep. finished one-two tonight. Yep. And we didn't. And he said, honestly, because of that, he felt like it was his fault. Ooh. He could have been smarter as a veteran maybe and right. not put himself or them in that position. So right. just really interesting. Uh, you know, the, the beginning of the season is red hot. Three different winners in the first three races in the mods. And next mm -hmm. week we have what the Kevin says yes.com uh, 100. I think it's Kevin Powell Motorsports. Is it? Okay. I think. Okay. And, and to throw it out there. Yeah. There's five 100 lap races. Okay. And stats. this is the this will be the first 100 lapper of the season, and fans, this is for you. You requested this years ago. You're finally getting it back. This is a fans challenge. This race pays the normal like 2,500 to win, but if you qualify in the top four, modified drivers, if you qualify in the top four, you will come out here on the front stretch, and you choose yes or no to the fans challenge. And if you say yes you drop to the rear of the field. And if you somehow, some way, make it back to the front after 100 laps in the top four, not the win, just the top four, you could go home $3,000 richer. And depending on how many drivers take the challenge, you could go home with $1,500. You could go home with 750 if all four. But if you're the only one, you could walk away with $3,000 extra dollars. So, it's, it's something that the fans have been clamoring for for years, and now they finally got it. So come on out to Bowling Green Stadium next week. It's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be electric. Some of the drivers that were not here, that only participates in the longer distance, they will be back. Like James Savali, he'll be back. Danny Bowen, he will be back. So it's gonna be fun. As if we needed any more charisma to the Madhouse. More <laughs> drama next week, more money, a challenge, and how about old Justin Mincy getting it done with the debrief on Short Track Life. Thanks a lot, buddy. You're welcome, Bob. Thank you very much.